Hi, Eugen is here and maybe this is your new favorite amp. It's very easy to use, unpretentious and extremely versatile. It can be equipped with a phono stage, Bluetooth and if this isn't enough, then also a decent deck. At the same time, it's made absolutely in audiophile way, inside a dual mono design in a B class. With all this, it's quite affordably priced. But that's not what makes this amp special, but something else. Let's talk about it and what this amp has in common with the studio equipment on which top artists are recorded. And before we jump into the review, I have to break the usual narrative order and give you a sneak peek at something that is inside of it, because it's very important. On its boards you can find the inscription, designed in cooperation with Loop Trotter. After all, it means that the well-known Polish audio engineer Andrzej Starzyk, who makes various studio equipment under his own brand Loop Trotter, put his mind into the development of this modest amplifier. You can say, well, some Paul is doing something in the Polish province, what does this mean for us? Actually, he is a really big dog. Firstly, he is a musician himself, and since the age of 16 he has been making various consoles and gadgets that change the sound. This is a person who is very knowledgeable about sound, an audio engineer with hands-on musical experience. But that's not all. When I looked at who is using his equipment now, I was shocked, to put it mildly. See for yourself. Silvia Messi, audio engineer, producer who has worked with Johnny Cash, System of a Down, Aerosmith, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Matty Green is a Grammy nominee known for his work with Dua Lipa, U2, Wither, TV on the Radio and Royal Blood. Charles Manis, the sound of Bruno Mars and Adele. Mike Fraser, ACDC, Franz Ferdinand, Metallica, Led Zeppelin, Van Halen, Mike Ellis, Depeche Mode, The Killers, Nine Inch Nails, Tom Jones, PJ Harvey and The Smashing Pumpkins. And this is not a complete list of professionals who have chosen low trotter equipment. And here you are, this humble amp embodies this man's vision of what a good amp should be like. I think it's quite impressive to find such roots in an unpromising device from Poland. Well, now let's jump into the review. This is a new integrated amplifier called Taurus. It's made by Fez Audio, a company from Poland that has become famous for its excellent tube amplifiers and for the fact that they are relatives of another well-known European hi-fi company named Toroidi, which makes great audiophile transformers. This device is the first solid-state amp made by Fez and it looks completely different from any other their amp. Even the Fez logo is new. It hosts in a full-size case. Its facade is made of a thick aluminum piece on which are located. On the left, the power button, the infrared receiver window and the 6.3mm headphone jack. The large volume knob of Alps motorized potentiometer is in the center. And on the right side, a row of input buttons, which are switched by the relays. There are 8 buttons here, because we have the top version. In general, all versions in terms of design and power are exactly the same, they differ only in additional modules. The basic version of the Taurus has index 5040, which is an amplifier with only 4 analog line inputs, without any extra electronics, a pure analog integrated amplifier with output power of 65 watts per channel at 8 ohms and 90 watts at 4 ohms. In the middle version with the Index 5050, an mm phono stage and Bluetooth 5.0 with MQA support are added. The top Taurus 5060, which is in front of you, in addition to all of the above, also has a deck built on the Wolfson 8740 chip. Outside, the case is shielded with a thick cover with ventilation holes painted with a pleasant pearl sand paint and decorated with the inscription Made of Music. It has four widely spaced pairs of RCAs on its back, and next to the last pair you'll find a ground terminal and a button that turns the first line input into the input of its phono stage. 
Beneath it all are its DAC digital inputs, USB, optical and coaxial. We'll talk more about the DAC and the phono stage a bit later. There are good acoustic terminals in the center. Not cheap, but nothing extraordinary, just normal, suitable for banana plugs and for spades. Beneath them is a switchable preamp input. You can feed the signal directly to the power amp by passing the preamp section. Tape output and stereo subwoofer output. Well, the Bluetooth antenna is at a distance, because the wireless module is moved as far as possible from sensitive circuits. And it's permanently disabled until you activate it with the button on the left side of the rear panel, so it won't create any unnecessary interference. And while it's not activated, you can turn it on from the front panel. Let's take a look inside. Here in the center is the main board with two independent mono power amplifiers with complementary pairs of transistors. On the left is a toroidal transformer with separate windings for each channel. On the right is a preamplifier board with relays and under it is a phono stage board and a deck board. What else? It has a sturdy metal remote that you'll have to take apart completely to install the battery. This is the first time I've come across such an intricate approach. The remote control itself is convenient and unlike its tube counterparts, it has full functionality, power on and off, switching inputs and the volume with smooth adjustment, not like in their tube devices, there it happens abruptly. And another funny moment, the zero position of the volume knob is at 9 o'clock position. So the middle of the range here is approximately in the 2 o'clock region. And the knob itself, it is okay, but not very grasping and in the evening it's completely blind. It doesn't have any light and the notch isn't visible in the dusk. A separate oddity with the fourth input. If you want to use a phono stage, then you lose one line input. There will be only three of them. Otherwise, it's an ordinary amp, which in an everyday use isn't particularly different from others. Quite firm, cozy and absolutely understandable. Nothing supernatural, but everything is very worthy, nothing to complain about. I first tried it with my Martin Logan ESL electrostatic speakers, and I must say that this unequal marriage clearly showed that Taurus needs speakers with less load. On the one hand, it proved to be a device capable of broadcasting high-resolution subtleties and details. But it frankly didn't have enough power. You can hear that it is hard for it to move four 8-inch woofers in the base sections of the speakers. There is a lack of punch and the volume knob twisting doesn't change the situation at all. So I took other speakers, Martin Logan 35 XTI bookshelves and 40i floor standards. And with them, this amp showed itself in all its glory. But before we jump into the sound, let's talk about whether you should pay extra for a phono stage and deck, because the difference in price can be quite noticeable. Phono stage and Bluetooth sounds good, but there is a caveat. If you have a medium or high-end MC cartridge, then you'll need an external step-up transformer or a separate phono stage with an MC section. If you use this phono stage with something like an Ortofon Quintet Black MC cartridge through a step-up transformer, then on the one hand, everything is timbrely excellent, but the phono stage clearly loses some of the sophistication that Ortofon delivers. Therefore, if you have something serious on your tone arm, then there is no point in this phono stage. It's better to use an external one. But if you have an MM cartridge of some average level, then this phono stage is what you need. Here, for example, I have an excellent vintage Technics MM cartridge and I really like the sound with it. The potential of this cartridge is revealed, uh, the presentation is very pleasant, detailed and weighty. As for such a rock cartridge, uh, this is what you need to listen to the early plum pressing of Led Zeppelin, for example. There will be complete delight. As for the deck, everything is more complicated here. I connected a high-quality Orander N150 digital transfer to it, which I already talked about here. And you know what? I got a surprisingly good sound, unrealistically cool. This bundle, transport, deck, amplifier and shelf speakers give amazing sound quality. 
It's fast, always superbly defined, super sculpted and tight, whatever you're listening to. And it's felt that these speakers are just suited well, they spread out a free, detailed sound, the stage is always clean, not very deep, uh, but very impressive in width. Recently, Australians Rufus De Soul released a remixed version of their last year's album in MQA. Unlike the light atmospheric sound of the original, the remixes sound more energetic, more aggressive, but at the same time retain all the lightness and summer mood of this album. The Taurus deck copes brilliantly with such music. The amplifier produces a dynamic, fast sound with 35 XTI bookshelf speakers. And light abstract background sounds are drawn airy, the stage is white, always plentifully filled with air, owing to which the music flows freely, very expressive and contrasting. And on this recording I tried to test its Bluetooth connection that supports MQA. I didn't think I'd ever say this out loud, but Tidal from iPhone via Bluetooth sounds amazing. Only a little rougher and sharper at the very top of the range and with a slightly tighter stage. But this difference still needs to be caught. When I realized that Bluetooth is really cool here, I listened to all my favorites on SoundCloud. Everything sounds decent and even files with a frankly low bitrate. By the way, in the 90s, at a time of heady permissiveness and freedom, a classy and rather radical music magazine named Ptuch was published in Russia. By the way, not a single Russian knows its meaning. So, in one of the issues of 1997, it was accompanied by a CD released jointly with the Coca-Cola company, which was called Sprite Driving Instinct. It featured four amazing jungle tracks from Storm Crew, a duo of DJ Groove and DJ Dan, mixed with a sprite at jingles. These four tracks are so impressive that they are still incredibly relevant today. And you know what? I found them on SoundCloud, I'll leave a link in the description. Check it out! And most recently the legendary British rockers Kasabian returned with a new 7th album in a row, which turned out to be very good. A really good comeback in which they seem to have become more lyrical, but at the same time they didn't go into tedious soul-searching. Although no, they left a little after all. But this didn't spoil this album, but simply filled with drama in moments. So pretty good all in all. As for how the Taurus and its deck work with a transport like the Orander. Everything sounds very expressive, really high level, and at high volume levels, which is important, it retains the purity and clarity of the sound. If you decide to turn the volume knob strongly to the right, then the amp won't scream and tear to the utmost. But I must say that in order to become really loud, the knob will have to be twisted much further than half the range, at around 4-5 hours. But in general Taurus doesn't look like it actually sounds. It looks much more modest. Like I said, it's a fast, technical sound and it's great for controlling not only bookshelf speakers, but floor-standing 40i speakers that produce a lot of deep, low-end sounds on the rocket fuel song without being hummed at all. You get a fat, juicy sound at the bottom with clear details at the top of the range. It sounds like it's a V-shaped sound, but it's not at all. It's an absolutely neutral, well-computed sound with a good mid-range where instruments and vocals don't drown in thundering basses. If you have any doubts about its ability to deliver the middle of the range, check out the new single from Memphis, Tennessee singer Valerie June Look at Miss Ohio. And by the way, I also recommend listening to her cover Fade Into You, the main hit of Mazzy Star, and everything will become clear. Taurus pretty impressively localizes Valerie in front of you. Her voice sounds so neat, delicate and detailed that you have the complete feeling that you are listening to some kind of audiophile setup, but not a middle class amp. Everything is so refined in a good way, the vocals just float in the air on Fade Into You such a great song. Talking about which configuration to choose, I think that for those who want to sort everything out at once, the top version will do. Yes, you will spend significantly more, but you will forget about upgrades until you decide to change the amplifier. 
But for those who plan to evolve, I would recommend taking the most basic version. With it you will be able to grow for a long time and safely connect external components of a fairly high level. The amplifier can confidently broadcast sound from more serious components. Fez really managed to make a good versatile amp with a high quality, clear and even sound. Yes, it doesn't have very high power, so it won't be able to handle very large or very tight speakers. But otherwise, Taurus looks like a very reasonable choice both for people on a tight budget, especially due to the ability not to overpay for a DAC, phono stage and Bluetooth, and for those who need a turnkey solution of a decent level.